Hey folks, welcome back. Well, if you've anybody seen a few videos I've had in the past couple of years, I'm not above sharing mistakes that I've made um, and what I've done to uh, correct them. So this is another one here. Um, this happens, this is a 2015 F350 with a 6.7 power stroke. And it's got about 380,000 miles on it. Um, it runs great. It's a great, great pickup. You can see that, you know, I'm not going to show the numbers or anything like that, but it's a, you know, hot shot runner or whatever. So it gets a lot of highway miles and stuff. Guy pulls a car trailer, I think. Anyways, um, so, uh, anyways, I had this thing in here, uh, where we had an exhaust manifold, it had a couple broken studs and I replaced the exhaust manifold both the exhaust manifolds, the gaskets, obviously, you know, and that, that job involved, you know, removing the turbo and this, that, and the other. Um, I just did it, you know, with the cab on the pickup. Cause actually at the time I did it, uh, in this bay over here where I don't have my lift. Cause I had something else on the lift at the time I did that job. So anyways, um, I took the pickup or sent the pickup, everything seemed fine. And then all of a sudden he said that, uh, it's just all of a sudden right out of the blue, it started making a horrendous noise. And um, he quit driving it, had it towed back in here. Um, during troubleshooting, the noise kind of went away, but it was, you know, but we were having a cylinder contribution <clears throat> issue. And if you did a, like a relative compression test, uh, you'd be about 14% less compression uh, than all the rest of them. And so, you know, after the, the noise went away, basically what it was was something was, I had either something, a bolt or a nut or something or whatever, something foreign. I must have dropped down either the exhaust hole from this is cylinder number eight or could have fell down into the uh, intake and waited a while until it rolled, until it sat on top of the valve, until it found its way into the piston and knocked around in there. Um, we just really quick wanted to uh, get the cylinder head off, figure out what you know damage had been done. Um, because you know, with, without the contribution issue, this thing was running great. Actually, you wouldn't really be able to tell after the noise went away, which means whatever was in there, um, broke and disintegrated enough that it pushed its way out through the exhaust. Didn't damage the turbo or nothing, but, um, anyways, this is where we're at. Uh, so pulling the cylinder head off, obviously the cylinder head, uh, was damaged. I don't have that cylinder head anymore. Um, so, uh, I can't show that, but I can show the piston because I just now got the piston out. And when I pulled the cylinder head off at first, I was thinking, well, the piston's dented up and everything. Maybe we'll be all right. But we did see some scoring just a tiny bit. You can't even, you can, I mean, if you can feel it with your finger, then that's way too much. Um, you can't really feel it, but you can see it. And it's at this point, I was at that point, I was not, uh, comfortable with just putting a, a new cylinder head on it and sending it away. So, um, this is where we're at here. Um, with, uh, transmission out, uh, upper and lower uh pan i think the lower pans in my oil bin it's just them them little ones there um off of here and then uh we've got or you know the connecting rod bolts on right there um here is that piece there marked it and everything so it goes back on correctly and this is the piston and what it did, you can see well, I had this thing all the way up and I kind of dremeled it, made sure it was all kind of nice and smooth. But then I was like, I just don't like it. And it was definitely a good call on my part because you can see, and I don't know how well it's gonna show up in the camera, but you can see how these part right here, well, that's dented enough to where that's scoring into the cylinder. And there's a few spots around here. There's the main one right here. So if you're looking right here, so I can get this same thing to focus. Come on camera.
So as you can see, the cylinder head um, comes out of here uh, pretty easy with the uh, turbo still in place. Um, just loosening the bolts on this bracket here that would bolt to the front of the head for your pulleys and stuff. All that remained in there. Um, there's tons of room uh, to do this. Hence the, you know, that was just, we needed to get this head off of here and figure out how much damage there was. And that's, um, you know, that's what, what we did and what we found, so. Right there. So it didn't do that much scoring on the piston that we can't, we, you know, we'll be able to just hone it out. Um, but it definitely, you know, you can see where it, it got into the top part of this here you know and it, it nicked it and everything like that um i don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera as far as uh looking up the uh cylinder there's a little bit of oil and stuff there but you can see some of the lines in there um those vertical going up now like i said you can't feel them with your fingers um but that's not right um you know i mean i wish you could see how well the cross hatches in the good places look on this engine it's crazy to have that many miles on it and uh this engine such in great such great shape um rear main seal was leaking so we are going to do that um, as well as take this uh, plate off there's a gasket rubber gasket behind all of those bolts there so we're going to take that off and take this crank position sensor out and um you know and then we'll we'll be resealing obviously the lower oil pan um or the upper oil pan and the lower oil pan um i should have pulled this dipstick out of there when i was up there i'll do that when i go back together with it but i just wanted to show you um you know the you know all this can be done with the engine and all that with cab and all that stuff still on it's really not that bad to do um the only thing is the, the biggest pain in the butt is a, is a, is one screw on this side and two screws on this side for this upper oil pan that are so close to this uh, cross member in here. Um, that's about it. Other than that, it's it's really kind of straightforward as far as transmission is one of the easiest I've ever pulled out um, of anything. <clears throat> that only takes probably like probably like an hour to do. Um, so, anyways, yeah. I done messed up on this one, so, you know, a lot of people would be kind of like, well, geez, you know, isn't it time for an engine rebuild? And, you know, I, at this point, I, I see what's damaged, and I can fix everything that's damaged. And so, with it having this many miles on it, I don't know. That's what we worked out with the customer. I'm sure some people would think about it in it with a different opinion, this, that, and the other, or whether or not, you know, it should have a complete engine rebuild over something like that. Um, but... At the same time, you know, I'm able to fix everything that gets damaged, including the cylinder wall, the piston, and the cylinder head, which, you know, comes, this is, you know, came right straight from Ford, um, and it's it's loaded with the valves and stuff already, so at that point, that's that's really all, all I, I can do as far as that goes, and throw in a few extra things like doing the uh, rear main seal, um and that gasket behind there you know and then getting a fresh reseal on the um on the pans um as well as you know like things like the uh oil filter adapter and this that and the other um you see the oil cooler is still attached there i just removed the the hoses to it i think the other one's sitting right there the one that goes uh right along here and then plugs in, um, I think right here. But anyways, that's mostly just what this video is about. Um, I'm just glad that once I got to the point where, you know, if I had this cab lifted up off of here and was doing the cylinder head that way, this would be a little bit harder of a job because I wouldn't have my lift available to um, uh, have this up in the air and do this work. So anyways, um, that's all I really wanted to talk about and show on this video was was that. Um, like I said, I don't know what fell down in there. I don't remember not being able to find a little screw or a nut or something like that. But, you know, 
who knows what it was I just really don't see anything else really have gotten in there that you know that quick where the guy barely drove 45 minutes to an hour away from my shop before it started making the noise it's almost kind of like I have to cover this and you know that's what we're doing but I thought I'd maybe just show this because um you know it's possible to replace the uh piston um they do have it for sale uh at ford there's a part number for it um oh, those are those are seals like that go up in the front there of that uh pan but the rest of it's all done with uh, rtv silicone um i think the earlier uh 2011s or in 2012s or something like that I actually had a rubber gasket around there i don't know why they quit doing that that was that's a hell of a lot better of an idea but here's a piston ring set here and then you know we've got a one of these is a is a head gasket i don't know which one's a head gasket the other one's a valve cover gasket um and then the new cylinder head and obviously uh, new cylinder head bolts, you know, those are the big ones and then these are the small ones That go in like here um, But all in all this Isn't too bad of a job to do it just takes some time uh, But it's all doable and Even without a lift, you know, if you're able to get the transmission out You're pretty much able to be able to do something like this um, You know just in your garage or something but anyways, hopefully this uh helped you out and uh thanks for watching